Hello friends, Stegman Pat here. Welcome to a mini Dirt Report. I've got some interesting updates today from the ACCC. They have just completed their Measuring Broadband Australia report for the 26th of June. It is now the evening of that day and let's talk about fiber to the premises delivering the most reliable broadband connection. Make sure to like and subscribe. Let's get started by running the intro. Fiber to the premises delivers most reliable broadband connection. I love the sound of that. We're gonna go through some of this and the report, but the first thing to note here is of course fiber is delivering the most reliable broadband connection because fiber cannot get affected by, well, anything electromagnetic unless it's literally cut with an ax, which actually has happened quite a few times in the Sydney CBD. I've reported on it before. <laughs> quite the event. But in the report measuring Broadband Australia, we have a lot of information, but I just wanna share with you what the RSPs are actually managing to achieve, because at the moment, fiber to the node has the highest issues in regards to reliability. But let's have a look at the speeds across Australia. Western Australia, my home state, download percentage is 97.1 of the rated speed on the plan that you're on. Northern Territory, 100.2%, fantastic. Uh, Queensland, 99.2 and New South Wales, 100. And of course, Tasmania, 97 and Victoria, 100. These are of course, the regions that have had the largest rollout of fiber, so New South Wales and Victoria. Our Northern Territory, my understanding in South Australia is a bit smaller, so there's also less areas to connect and hence why the percentage is like that. I'm actually surprised the ACT is only at 97.8. Kind of surprising in Tasmania at 97, which is also a little bit surprising. But overall, nationwide during busy hours, we got 99.8%. Fantastic, and this percentage has been skyrocketing since fiber has been rolled out. So why is fiber more reliable than copper? Obviously there are physical limitations. Copper is a metal and it can only travel as far as the electricity can go down that copper cable. It also has multiple degradations that happen over time. 10, 15, 20, 50 year old cables are gonna have worse performance than newer cables, but they are physically limited because they're still not as fast as light. Fiber is light signals traveling through a glass tube or basically a glass fiber that flows straight into your home. And physically it has no limitations on length. So the longer it doesn't really matter, light will travel at the speed of light. And furthermore, as alluded to earlier, fiber doesn't have the effects that other copper cables would have when it comes to electromagnetic interference. So if it's underground and things are happening, your microwave is on, your fiber connection will not be affected. So in the context of the internet, the only thing that can really stop fiber is cutting the cable or a power outage, obviously. But at the end of the day, it travels further, it's faster, and it's by far more resilient to weather and underground conditions. And with an armored cable, it lasts a very long time. I've seen numbers of about 100 plus years. And the best thing is to get more speed out of your fiber cable, all you have to do is change the devices on either side, the sender receiver to get higher speeds. So down the line in 30, 40, 50 years, Ambient Co can upgrade their infrastructure to get more speed. Now, if we have a look at average download performance by RSP, this is the one I really like looking across. So if you're sitting there going, what RSP do I choose if I want the fastest speed all the time? This is a really good indicator. We've got Aussie Broadband at 98, 99, Dodo 101, 102, Exitel, and, and so on. Uh, I'm on Lawn Tail, so 99 to 100. But we look at Telstra 102 to 103, but we've had so many comments below where Telstra customers are unable to hit that speed. So it begs the question, who is actually providing this information to the ACCC. Well, it's a company called Samnose, which I've actually worked with a company that uses Samnose for a little while before. We were trying to capture as many people to share their broadband speeds with that company. So I bet some of those people are sharing those speeds. 
and that information with um, ACCC. However, what I've sort of found is the people who go on those systems are generally people who have pretty good internet anyway, and it's just something extra they can do. They earn, I think, a voucher every time they share their information for X amount of months. In any case, I don't know how reliable it is because obviously there's people still complaining about these speeds. And the other thing is you could always say that the minority is the loudest. So people who have terrible speeds always talk about how bad their speeds are. And people who have great speeds don't need to comment because it's not something that is in front of their mind. So take these things, these numbers with a grain of salt. And time. You may have seen the lawn tail name gently kicked around on this channel a few times, but I finally made the swap. My NBN connection is now serviced by lawn tail and I'm going to happily recommend it to you. I've been absolutely stoked with the performance thus far. So if you're looking for a very flexible, fast, low ping for all that gaming goodness NBN supplier with great customer service and not one of the big players who see you as a number, then check out lawn tail. Use the code techmanpat below to sign up and you'll get a $25 credit on your account and your NBN connection will be swapped within a few hours with absolutely no hassle. Lawntail is flexible with no lock in contracts with plenty of features for the techie folks out there. So check the links below. Thanks and back to the video. Now, the average upload speed by RSP, we've had so many people complain about upload speeds. I hate my upload speed right now. It averages 36 megabits a second. And when I upload a video like this, that's usually five to six gigs, oh, it takes so long. It's like half an hour, 40 minutes. And I really just wanna make sure it's on YouTube and I can post it straight away. Cause otherwise, you know, you, you miss out on the news cycle and so on. So it's actually bad for me that the speed is so slow. I've uploaded on my 5G connection in the past just to make it that 10 minutes faster. It's nuts. In any case, most of them are hitting 83 to 86%, 88% on Superloop. At the end of the day, if you want the best upload speeds, you need to be on fiber. And of course, if you want to have the best download speeds, you'll need to be on Fiverr. I'm still waiting for NBN Code to bring higher upload speeds. And I know a lot of people have been complaining about it. So you know what? Let your RSP know that this is important to you. And hopefully at the next check-in with NBN, your RSP brings it up and says, let's, let's offer higher speeds. At the moment, the only way to get higher upload speeds is to be on an ABN. And that also means you pay more. I think a lot of people benefit from a symmetrical 50-50. That would be fantastic. All right, last one. Here are the performance numbers by the actual technology. So fiber to the node, we have 102% of the plan, 94% of the plan for 50 and 100. So as you can see, this is the part where it's really important to judge the technology. At 25 megabits down, the plan is hitting 102% because most lines can actually attain at least 25 megabits per second. Once the speed starts going up, this is where the technology fails. At 50, it's only 47, so 94%. At 100, it's only 87%, which is obviously 87.6 megabits per second. When we get fiber to the curb, which has got a plan of 50 there, it has 104% because it's literally fiber to the road or the curb, and then it's just the copper cable to your house, which is fine. Copper is okay at these short runs. Then when we get to HFC, we can see that the improvement is even further. It's a great thick cable and it can run at longer distances. And again, we're achieving higher percentages of plans, even if it's during busy hours. And then we get to fiber to the premises, very high speeds, you get 50, 100 to 50, one gigabit, and then hopefully two gigabits soon. And we're always hitting those speeds. Hence why it's reliable and it's reliable even during busy hours. <laughs> I don't even want to talk about fixed wireless speeds, but you know, 86% is not bad. That's a passing grade. I'd take those odds when I'm, I don't know, falling out of a plane with the parachute, 86% chance it opens up, but uh, it's, it's not great especially when there's a lot of people during busy hours. So folks, that's all I have for you today. Lots of things to read up on this document. Of course, I will share that below. 
Other than that, it's really just an update saying that Fiber is doing the right thing and a lot more people are switching to Fiber. My dad, in fact, has just switched to Fiber and the speeds are incredible. And actually it's solved a lot of the Wi-Fi issues because the internet's so much faster, the Wi-Fi doesn't, even if it's struggling, it's still getting a lot more speed. Like I said in my review of a recent router from TP-Link, our internet speed in Australia is never going to catch up to the speed your Wi-Fi is capable of. So if people say you need a better Wi-Fi connection, it really depends on what the problem is. It might be that your internet speed is just terrible or you're just connected to the 2.4 gigahertz band on your router, which you just need to change to the five gig or the six gig if you have one of the newer routers. Folks, let me know your comments below. Which one of these RSPs have you had a terrible time with? If my channel is the only place you're gonna comment these things, then please do, I'd love to start cataloging a little bit of this information. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you all in another one. Bye.